goes directly to fail, doesn't collect $200. Fitbit's rash decision to recall its fitness tracker. There's no business like slow business, am I right, with Comcast and Netflix. Nokia jumps on the Android bandwagon, and WhatsApp wants your voice to be heard this year. This is the news on 5x5, your daily dose of Apple, tech, geek, and web culture. It's the only news that matters. I'm Hattie Cook. I'm Sky Fosnott. Today is Thursday, February 27th, 2014. Apple has released an update to both iOS 6 and 7 to fix a critical flaw in how it recognizes and ensures a secure connection can be trusted. The bug, found to be just a single line of code, meant iOS failed to properly check that a secure connection was, in fact, authentic. In fact, the check iOS performed could never fail. If that wasn't bad enough for the company, the bug has also been found within OS X, making the Mac vulnerable to the exact same issue, though a patch has yet to be released. Fitbit has announced it will be recalling its Force Fitness Tracker after reports that its plastic wrist strap has been causing some a rather unpleasant skin irritation. Although the company suggests only a small handful of customers have been affected, the company has been working with medical experts and determined that a full recall is necessary. Any Force owners are encouraged to contact Fitbit to arrange for a replacement device or a refund. Another company keen on to rid their customers of irritation is Netflix, who has entered into an agreement with Comcast after increasing customer complaints that Netflix streaming has become increasingly difficult, resulting in lower quality feeds and longer buffering times. Both companies have entered into what they describe as a mutually beneficial agreement with providing America's largest ISP a more direct access to their servers. In return, Comcast assures customers that they'll be able to provide the best possible speeds for those wanting to fully enjoy the new season of House of Cards. I know I will. Less than six months after Microsoft bought Nokia's mobile device division, the Finnish company has announced today its first set of Android-powered smartphones at the, world, at the Mobile World Congress in Barcelona. The Nokia X, X Plus, and XXL are all powered by heavily customized versions of Android that won't feature any of Google services or its Play Store. Instead, Nokia is providing its own storefront for apps and will leverage Microsoft's range of services from Outlook to Skype, with many apps pre-installed. The X range aren't destined for U.S. shores. Instead, they're heading to emerging markets and will be less than 110 euros. It's been a busy week for WhatsApp. Only days after its Facebook acquisition, it's announced plans to bring voice calling features to its messaging service later this year. Competing with the likes of Skype and FaceTime audio, WhatsApp will add voice functionality to its iOS and Android apps, though no word on whether this will be included as standard or require an additional fee to use. Tune in next time to find out all the latest from Samsung's Galaxy's event and how Gmail made it super easy to read, rid yourself of unwanted newsletters. And be sure to check out 5x5.tv and follow 5x5 on Twitter for more on your favorite geek to topics. We will see you tomorrow. See ya.